Hey guys, Chris Peterson here. Just wanted to give you guys a different type of video this time. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine, Brian Wall, and he was telling me how um, a lot of people don't really know how to store their chess games electronically using a chess software like Chessbase 10. And I have a copy of Chessbase 10 here, and I kind of wanted to show you guys how to use it a little bit so that way you can store your games electronically. Now, first, what you want to do is open up the Chessbase 10, and I'm sure a lot of you are used to going File, New, New Board, and putting your your game while you have uh, Fritz running. Now, I don't really analyze games too much with Fritz, so I just put them in and save them, but that's probably what you're used to doing. Now, I'm going to show you how to store those games electronically, with or without annotations, so that way you can pull them up later. Um, review them, analyze them later, um, so you can look them up in the database by openings, you know, stuff like that, um, and more importantly, you can export the game as a PGN, so that way you could um, send it to other people, or put it on a website, or something like that, alright? So the first thing you'll want to do is open up Chessbase 10, and you're going to get a window that looks a little bit something like this. Now this window um, is the the default window for Chessbase 10, and um, it might not look exactly like this because I'm going to have some I'm going to have more databases than you if you don't have any, and also um, all these windows are rearrangeable, so um, it might look a little bit different. Okay, so first what you'll want to do is start a new database. So you go File, New new database alright and it'll ask you where you want to save it I would recommend saving it in my documents chessbase database so that way it's very easy for you to find later on but you could save it wherever you desire you can save it on the desktop anywhere pretty much save it actually to a, an external hard drive or something if you want to carry your games with you alright so um, first I'm going to remove that weird looking folder um, so then you want to name your database. I'm just going to leave this new database named new database since I don't really need a new database right now. Alright. New database. There we go. And now up at the top half of this video we can see that a new database has been created. However, there isn't anything in it. If I click on one of these other databases like this big database, we can see that there are st there's stuff in it that gives us a little preview down below. And this is a game of older, or a database of older games. So, um, I don't know, people like Lucina, uh, Greco, uh, Morphe, Philidor, all these people. Um, so that just goes to show that our new database has no games in it. So what you'll want to do is go File, New, new board and we can start inputting our game so let's let's just put in a fake game here now if if you guys um I don't want to move that <coughs> now this is an example of something called league house made if you've never seen it before and there, checkmate. Okay, so now now that we have our game entered, what we want to do is we want to save it. So we'll do uh, Control S to save, or you can go File and Save. File, Save. And it'll ask you which database you want to save it in. Okay, so what you want to do is search through here and find the database. Um, more than likely, um, it'll pull up where you want to save it automatically because you only have the one database. Okay, so we're going to save it in new database. And now it's going to pull up this little window. It's going to ask you for a bunch of information. It wants to know white's name, black's name, tournament, white's rating, black's rating, round, sub-round, the result, the date, and all this other information. Okay? Oh, it wants to know who the annotator is, white team, black team, source, all, all this information. Now, um, this is pretty self-explanatory here. So white, we want to enter in last name. So I'm going to put my last name. And black, we're going to put Chris. 
or first name we'll put my name. So Chris Peterson. Alright. Now black we're gonna say Wall Brian. Because Brian's a terrible player. He would fall into this the gal's mate every time. So So if you ever play Brian, try to get him in this Legal's mate. Alright, then we wanna put in their ratings. So mine is like nineteen hundred and Brian's is about twenty two hundred. And then since I didn't play in a tournament, this won't have a tournament or round information. But we do want to put in the result, and we definitely want to make sure the date is correct. Okay. And once you get that information in, you can hit OK. And that will, it'll repopulate the information here, but it'll also populate the information here. See? Now it's in our new database. We have one game. Alright. So now let's say we want to make some changes to this game. Let's say we want to go through and annotate it. All right. Uh, Brian likes to give e4 question marks because his fishing pole is so powerful. Uh, and then he likes to give e5 exclamation points because it's so good against e4, I guess. All right. So first, um, now that we got our annotations in there, uh, we want to save it again, right? So let's go Control S and it'll ask for this information again. We'll hit OK. Or you could go File, uh, Save into New Database. Same thing, okay? But now, if we go back to our chess-based 10 database viewer thing, window, um, we'll see in our database now we have two games. These games are exactly the same. The only difference is this bottom one has a couple of annotations. So if you want to create one database strictly for annotated games. You can do it that way. Just make sure you pick which database you want to save it in by going uh, File, Save Game As, and it'll ask you which database. Or if you just want to have games and you want to have all those annotations on there, what you want to do is open up the game. This is the unannotated version. And you can put the same annotations in well, I'm going to put in the same annotations. Hopefully you don't have to do it all over again. Put in the exclamation points. And now, instead of hitting Control S to save, we want to hit File, Replace, or Control R. It's going to ask you for the same information again, and after we hit OK, um, we'll close that. And as you can see, now we have two, we still have two, because I didn't delete this bottom one, but this top one, if we double-click it, E4 has double question marks, E5 has two exclamation points, so our replace was successful, and now this game does have annotations. So we can go ahead and close that. Now, now we have a problem. We have these two games in our database. They're duplicates of each other, so we want to remove one of them. So let's go, uh, let's select it, and we're going to press delete. And now we can see it's got strike through, but it's not gone. If we put in another game, it's going to say 3, whatever, whatever. So we need to remove the game from the database completely. So we go Tools. Oops. Make sure you have the database selected on the top. Tools. Database. Remove deleted games. And it's going to ask you if you want to pack the database. And we want to say yes. And what that does is it basically removes the deleted games and... Uh, fills in the blanks. It it uh, moves everything back so there's no uh, empty numbers. Okay, so now we're down to just our one game. If we click it, it's got the annotations, and everything's working great. Now, um, once you get your database filled with a bunch of games, say uh, this database is for the Denver Chess Club. It's got about 106 games because I just started doing it a couple months ago. Um, but once you get your database full of games, and you want to export them, at, you want to make a PGN version of the game. Maybe your friend wants to see it, and you can't like bring them over to your house because your wife is going to kill you or something. Um, then you could export it as PGN. And what you do is you highlight all the games that you want. In this case, I'm going to select all the games from the September tournament. I'm going to right click, and it's going to have output. Output selection to text file, because PGN is a text file. Make sure you select PGN, standard, and the rest of this you can just forget. Okay? And 
PGN standard, and then just hit OK. And it's going to ask you where you want to save it. I usually just save it to the desktop. Make sure you name it so it's something appropriate to the PGN. In this case, September VCC Tuesdays. Hit save. And now if we go to our desktop, we'll see we have this new file here. And if we double click it, it's going to be full of PGNs. So here's Matt Malinsek, Daoud Zupa. Here's Kevin Seidler, Justin Alter. And all these games are now in this database. Okay? And they are now in this file of PGNs. So you can attach that to an email and send it out. And the advantage of PGNs is um, they are fairly small in size. So this one's only 16.7 kilobytes. Granted, it only has, I don't know, like 20 six games or something in it, but uh, they are fairly small size, and it has all the information that we put into that little uh, box that popped up asking us for like white's name, black's name, all that stuff. So here, event is going to be the tournament name, the date is the date the game was played, round, pretty obvious, white, black, ratings, ECO code is the opening, um, ply count is the number of half moves, so in this case 32 times 2, 64. Um, and then white team and black team. What is white team and black team? Well, in my effort to try to make a dynamic website for the Denver Chess Club, I'm trying to link players with their USCF numbers um, as far as the games they've played, tournaments, and member profiles. So uh, white team and black team is going to be their USCF numbers. Okay, so I mean putting in these games into the computer is going to be pretty tedious. And if you have a huge stack of games that you have to put in, it's going to be a, a big pain in the butt to put them all in. But hopefully this little tutorial will kind of show you guys how to store those electronically. So that way, if your house burns down or you have a flood or um, you get really mad because you lost a couple games and tear up all your score sheets, um, you, won't have, um, you won't have lost all those games. Okay? So... Yeah, hopefully that'll help you guys get some games stored electronically. Alright.